Well, good day, flatties and globe defenders. This is Critical Think from Down Under. You know, the flatties say that if we live on a globe, we'd be upside down in Australia. Well, there you go. We live on a globe. Proof right there. Well, enough of that nonsense. Let's get on with today's video. You can see in the background there the fabulous Uluru. It's one of the places I visited on a road trip uh, collecting data for this video. Now this is a road trip to the outback in December 2022. I've been sitting on this data for a bit waiting for the opportunity to produce the results of weight change versus latitude. Yet another experiment. Now, I've done a few of the same experiment and uh, just to confirm the globe is still a globe. Now, um, I'm going to indulge in a few holiday snaps, not, not just for the personal indulgement, but, you know, there may be a few of the cognitively challenged individuals that may think that I'm lying about all this. So here's a couple of pics just to show you the proof that I've been there. And uh, this one's Daily Waters Pub. They don't like flat earthers there either. And uh, also at Daily Waters, it's magnificent to see some more globe evidence in the night sky. The uh, sun shining at the bottom of the clouds. I'd love to know how the flat earthers can explain that one. And some beautiful scenery in the Northern Territory. Absolutely gorgeous. Darwin Harbour. I did get up to Darwin. And uh, that's me hard at work. And yeah, somewhere around or in uh, Northern Territory near Alice Springs, I think. And uh, some of the areas I travelled in required the installation of an extended range fuel tank because 98 fuel is a little bit difficult to obtain in some parts. And then off down to South Australia and then we made our way back. So the weight change versus latitude experiment is compelling evidence which confirms beyond reasonable doubt that we live on a rotating oblate spheroid. Oh, of course, many a flatty will disagree with this, but all of those who are not infected with the flat earth virus will understand. It goes on about the difference in uh, the weight of things at the equator compared to other places in the earth. Have you actually gone and measured it? Have you ever done it? Yes. We understand that in the model, based on the spin and centrifugals, <coughs> centripetal, centripetal, whatever forces, that that's the result that you can calculate based yep. on your model. Yep, we did. But can, has anyone, has anyone actually gone and measured this so-called difference? Has anyone actually measured that a kilogram weighed in the, you know, somewhere up north is any different to a kilogram weighed on the equator? Yes. Has anyone actually gone and done that? Yes. No, they have not. Ah. A kilogram is a kilogram wherever you are on the earth. <laughs> that never gets old. And uh, until PW comes to my channel and says he's wrong about that, I'll keep playing it. Any of you who watch my channel, you know, I think this experiment is fabulous. So why is it so fabulous? Well, not many people realise this is a real measurable thing. And it's a non-optical observation. Therefore, all the arguments about optical drop, limited angle, refraction, etc. Sorry, no, I can't make those arguments here. And there is no flat earth explanation for the naturally observed phenomenon. It's observable, testable, repeatable, and a falsifiable hypothesis, and anyone can do the experiment. Statistical analysis eliminates flat earth as a valid hypothesis. That's why the flatties hate it so much. If there was no R or rotation, it would not work, and it confirms the existence of a rotating oblate spheroid. So it's a counter to all the arguments for it about no measured curvature, no rotation, because they see the horizon is flat and they don't feel it rotate. They think these things don't exist. 
that this experiment confirms the existence of curvature and rotation. And it's also real world evidence of the gravitational equation. Here yeah, they say gravity is not a force, but we experience it as a force. And I consider myself a subject matter expert on this topic. I don't know anyone else who has done this experiment so many times. And the flat earth cult objections, they're straight up denial. Oh, no, no, you, the weight never changes. Nobody's ever measured it. Oh, it could be air density, air temperature, air pressure, whatever. Magnetic field fluctuations have debunked all of these things. <laughs> and uh, variations in gravity. Even though gravity not supposed to exist, remember? And, oh, you haven't done the experiment enough times. Yeah, well, I've done it quite a few times now. And uh, some people have even mentioned, oh, no, dependent independent variables. Yeah, idiots. And my jeweler says, well, the jeweler uses scales, but he doesn't understand about calibration and everything. And then I've heard, how does some random dude on the internet have any credibility? We don't see any of this in the media. Yeah, okay, so what happened to do your own research? Yeah, come and debate me, anyone? So here's the theory. I'll quickly go over this. I've covered it in previous videos, but... I think it helps to just go over it one more time. So there's the force of gravity acting on us as we stand on our wonderful globe. And that generates a downward force of about 9.8 newtons. And uh, the force due to centrifugal effect, which the tendency to throw you off the planet, is only about 0.034 Newton. So for all those people that think it's like a spinning tennis ball and the water should fling off the planet, just look at the difference there. The downward force is much greater than the flinging off the planet force. But it's measurable. And here's the theory. So at the equator, because the uh, Earth is an oblate spheroid. There's a gravity is a little bit less at the equator, and the central fugal force is uh, the greatest because that's the highest rate of spin <laughs> a thousand miles per hour, remember. So that generates a force of about 0 0.034 newtons. Now, this example here calculated at 30 degrees. So the force of gravity is a little bit more because the radius is a little bit less. And uh, there's the centrifugal force operates perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So it will have a, a vertical component and a horizontal component, F y and Fx. Calculate that out. And at 30 degrees latitude, it's 0 0.0255. So as you move away from the equator, uh, something will start to weigh heavier if you don't change the scales, if you keep the scales at the same calibration. So the equipment I used, I've got my trusty Digitech scale, which has been with me for quite a while. There's only one problem with this scale. Its limit is 1,000 grams. So when I go south, I pretty much have to weigh 900 grams instead because I can't weigh more than a thousand. Now I found another different branded copy of the same scale. They can pump these out of the factory with uh, various maximum weights and uh, so this one has a maximum weight of 2,000 grams. So it allows me to weigh over a thousand grams on this scale and I think that's a good compromise for what I want to do as long as it's accurate so this is my first test of that scale and I can weigh a thousand grams and in this trip I weighed a thousand grams and as well as 500 and we'll see what happens with this scale. I've also brought with me the El Cheapo scale as you've seen before if you've watched some of my previous videos it sort of works okay, but this is only good for someone who wants to do this experiment on the cheap. Not that the other scales are very expensive, but they're of the order of a couple hundred bucks. 
and this one is sort of the order of 20 bucks or 30 bucks I don't remember so the same as the last time I did this experiment I worked on improving the accuracy so I'm using reliable scales with a stable calibration I only measure indoors because they're too difficult outside several readings per location to make sure I get a stable reading and make sure the scales are level very important and uh, record weight latitude and elevation so the measurements we started at Redcliffe went to Emerald, Hewenden, Mount Isa, Daly Waters, Darwin, Catherine, Alice Springs, Garn, Port Augusta, Broken Hill, Narrabri and back to Redcliffe so that's a uh, sort of a half lap not quite the big half lap, a small half lap and the results as usual I uh, put them in a spreadsheet and all the figures for I weighed at 500 grams all three scales a thousand grams for the bigger scales for the scale that did not work over a thousand grams I just took the 500 gram values and multiplied by two to get the approximates there for that. So my new scale, which is the scale one, can you see here? That's um, the thousand gram weight and the WGS 84 prediction, all very close. The 500 grams all the three scales and in yellow is the WGS 84 prediction as you can see the cheap scale is is workable but it's just not quite the accuracy of the other two so that's pretty good match for the globe and the other scale similar a thousand grams and um, that looks pretty good so here's my plot for the readings in December 2022 now the lines here explains the cyan or bluish line there represents what you should see on a flat earth the weight should not change the brown line is if we were not rotating but we were still on a sphere you see that's not even close and then this is a rotating sphere this purple line so that's not right either and the green line is combines the spheroidal shape with the rotation and you can see our data points line up pretty good with that so that demonstrates both rotation yeah. and the spheroid nature of our globe and here I combine all the results I've done uh, with some results that other people have done and you see it's pretty clear they all clustered around the rotating spheroid model that's pretty comprehensive and pretty conclusive and after analyzing all the data I've got 99 points now and the WGS 84 model explains 98% 98.7 actually of the variation the flat earth model explains 0% and just point this out that if we were on a flat earth and we got measurements now we'd expect a little bit of error we'd expect something like the green dots based on the error of my scales so you'd expect to see that but instead we see this so the chances of the earth being flat there is one in a gazillion uh, so I, I would i would never put 50 cents on the flat earth uh even though your payback would be about 100,000 million 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 but there you go how could you possibly believe in a flat earth when you see those odds well that's it thanks for watching Please like, subscribe and share this video.